Hey family, how y'all doing? I hope y'all doing good. I hope y'all just having a blessed and highly favored day. <laughs> I hope that y'all getting in y'all word and really getting that spiritual food so you ain't starving. I hope you're not spiritually starving out here. Don't be out here spiritually starving. Feed your spirit, man, daily, okay? But um, right now, I just want to tell you guys what the Lord told me about Corona. And he said... Corona, the coronavirus, is my judgment. That's what he said. Coronavirus is my judgment. And then he said, if you caught corona, it's because of my judgment. He said, everyone, this is what he said, everyone who is living in sin will catch corona at some point. The corona ain't going nowhere. If you are living in sin, You're going to catch the corona. You are, for a fact. It's his judgment. Um, and that's exactly why those of us who aren't wearing masks or those of us who don't even believe in the protection of a mask, it's because we believe in the protection of the blood of Jesus. And um, the blood is powerful. The blood is more than just something that he wrote in the word as, a, you know, him sacrificing himself and he died on the cross and, you know, he was bleeding, you know. But no, when when you're really pleading the blood of Jesus and your, your home is covered in the blood of Jesus and you're covered in the blood of Jesus, you are protected. You are protected. And it takes more than just saying, I, um, it takes more than just saying, I plead the blood of Jesus. Because if you're pleading the blood of Jesus, but you're not walking like Jesus, it does nothing. You have to really be walking in righteousness or attempting to do it. Because if you're if you're continuously backsliding or if you're not pressing towards a relationship with God, you will catch it. And this is a fact. It's literally what he said. Um, Lord, is there anything else you want me to touch on? Um The world is using it as a way to do whatever agenda it is that they're doing, that they want done. So their agenda is scare everybody with this corona, make them feel like a mask and a vaccine is going to protect them. And that vaccine, um, it has some stuff in it that I don't know. I, I'm not sure what's in it. But what I do know is it's not safe. It's not, um, it's just not something you want to put in your body. Okay. I didn't take no vaccine, I'm not wearing a mask, and I still haven't caught it. So, it's just like, y'all really gotta stay in God during this time because it's gonna get worse. That's what he said too, it's gonna get worse. It's going to get worse. So, um, the thing about this too is people that wore masks, People that wore masks still caught it because it's not something that a mask can protect. <laughs> it's really, really not something that a mask can protect. That's why it's foolish. That's why it's like, it's silly because if God has it to where that's your judgment anyway, with that mask, you're going to catch it. It don't matter if you had a full uh, gas mask on. You're still going to catch it if that's his judgment for you. So that's all I wanted to say. Um, continue to plead the blood of Jesus over you and your families, um, your loved ones, and continue to stay in prayer. There is so much going on in this world that the news is going to try to make it seem like they're here for you and that they know the answers. They don't know. They have no clue, especially since God is changing things to where they thought they knew what was going to happen and it ain't going down like that. But this is just all programming because it's going to start from wear a mask or you can't get in. Then take this vaccine or you can't get in and take this chip or you can't buy or sell anything. That's the last thing that's going to happen. And this has all been prophesied. So if you, in your mind, if you're thinking, living in the flesh, if you're thinking that that mask protects you, that's the same thing that's going to make you take that vaccine. And that's the same thing that's going to make you take that chip that comes last. First, they had to put the fear in you. 
Then they had to make you feel like they knew, they knew what to do to prevent you from getting it. Now, they're going to... They're going to put fear in you to where it's like, all right, so y'all ain't going to buy or eat. Um, Y'all ain't going to buy or sell anything if you don't have this chip in you. And if they've groomed you, you will believe that there's nothing wrong with that chip. Because if you believe there's nothing wrong with that vaccine, you're going to believe there's nothing wrong with that chip unless you awaken yourself to it and your spirit um, discerns what's really happening. Do not take that shit. There's a verse in the scripture. I'm sorry I haven't been really coming with scripture lately, but it's just, it's too, it's a lot that he's been putting in me. And usually when he wants me to really do scripture, like when it's really like a must, um, he'll say it. He'll be like scripture, scripture. Because he knows that when I talk, I just go, 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 go. I just go on, on and on and on. Um, being led by the Holy Spirit. But I do love bringing scripture, um, but it is a lot going on. I don't talk about what's going on, but it's a lot going on. Um, still, of course, everything's being a uh, blessing. Everything I touch is being blessed. However, however, it's just a lot going on. And, um, but I just need you guys to uh, really, oh, that's what I was getting into. There's a scripture in the word that talks about the mark of the beast. That, that shit right there, that's the mark of the beast. That is the mark of the beast. Where he said, you have taken the mark of the beast, the 666, um, that satanic, you will not be allowed into heaven because you chose your side. You chose your side. Yeah. Um. And you know what too is like, what he does with his children, he wants you, everything is about trust. So he wants you to trust him. So when you have been really giving yourself to the Lord and really allowing him to guide you and lead you and to show you who he really is as God, Elohim, Yahuwah, Yahushua, you will build that trust with him to where you won't care about, oh, I can't buy something. I can't sell nothing. What am I going to do? You ain't going to be worried because worry is not a fruit of the spirit, but this world puts worry in you. This world puts fear, anxiety, all types of different emotions that is not the fruit of the spirit. Don't take that shit. Don't take that shit. Get close to God while you have a chance. That's why even in the word it says, seek him while he is near. Because this is, ain't the, this is not the first time where he came through with plagues. This is not the first time where he came through with destruction. Okay? So these plagues that are happening, it's supposed to be waking people up. And a lot of people are still knocked out, sleep cold, KO right now. It's supposed to be waking you up. Like, what's going on right here? What's going on with this? Like, I know as soon as they started talking about people being in their homes and they can't come out the house, that immediately in my spirit sent like an alert, like a warning, like, hold up. You're giving us a curve. You're telling... You're trying to put us on my, but then they have a movie. Okay. Everything is planned, y'all. So just stay in your word. Like I said, stay in your word. Stay in prayer and worship and worshiping God. Because you know, the thing is that um, people that are not resting in God aren't able to really worship him in spirit and in truth right now because they're probably like, where are you, God? Like, what are you, what's going on with this world? And this world can't really be, you know, you can't really be in this world if there's all of this stuff going on. But what they don't realize is when you are in God, there's a difference between those who are in the world because you're worshiping rather than sitting out there smoking, drinking, partying, um, doing all types of different things. You're in worship and you're you're in tune with the spirit and what's going on with the spirit. So you're in excitement. There's a reason why. If you're not in excitement, there's a reason. If you're not, if you're not excited for what's to come, for what God is about to do, that means you're not in the spirit. Get into the spirit. And it really all it takes is to just ask him for the spirit. It just takes to want to get to know him. And that word right there, the word of God, that's how you get to know him. And spending time with him. And really, like I said, don't read it like a book. Don't read it like a book. Read it like you're really having a conversation with somebody. 
pray while you're reading it. Pray for understanding while you're reading it. If you, if you don't understand something in that word, pray for understanding. He'll give it to you. Literally, he will. Because you can't read the Bible in your own understanding. I've been in so many different uh, debates, I guess you could call it, where people think they know the word of God because they studied it for 10 years and I've been doing this for like two years. They think they know it so much more because they've been studying it more. But if you don't hear the voice of God, if you don't even have the Holy Spirit while you're reading it, you will interpret it with your own understanding. But when you're reading it through the Holy Spirit, the Spirit will interpret not only what it is saying, but what the Spirit is trying to tell you about your life. So you could be reading David versus Saul, right? Where Saul tried to kill David. And it's going to point out things in your life while you're reading it. If you're reading it through the Spirit and not reading it like a book, the word should be jumping out. The word should be jumping out at you like, yo, this right here, it's making me feel like he's saying this is about to happen. Or this is making me feel like, you know, I need to start acting like this when these type of situations happen. Like it'll just start speaking to you. So just stay in worship. Worship while you wait for what he's about to do. Have a blessed day, week, month, and a year. Don't forget. I said a day, week, month, and a year. So that means today, tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Stay in joy. Stay in peace. Don't let nobody take it from you because the enemy will try to do that. The enemy will convince you that there's no point in building a relationship with God because maybe it's too late. Or maybe you think you did something wrong to where you're condemning yourself. Or maybe you've, you've, um, you just feel like, you don't know where to start. It, it's it's not um, something that you really study as if you're going to school and you got to have rules to it. This is literally his love. The word of God is love. So it's literally a relationship. So just build that relationship with him and repent for those wrongdoings and really cry out to him and ask him to take them away because we cannot do it ourselves. We can't sit there and read, read the word of God and it's giving us things that we should work on and expect that we just will be able to do it ourselves. That we'll just wake up and not be lusting anymore. Or we'll wake up not wanting to smoke anymore. We'll wake up not wanting to drink. Or we'll wake up with no idols. Or we'll wake up and we won't want to be with those soul ties anymore. No. His spirit will make you not want those things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, I pray, I pray that you would increase their strength and increase their faith, hallelujah, and that you would allow them to be honest with you while they are praying and to keep you in their hearts, Father God, and to open their eyes and to open their ears to what you are doing, what you are saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, help them to be consistent in their walk with you, Father God. Help them to make those right decisions that is going to lead them on that narrow path that is leading to you rather than the wide path, the path that majority take that leads to destruction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take them up and out of this world and take those demons up and out of them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, send the fresh out pouring right now hit them like a wave hallelujah and let them read the word of god and as they read the word of god let the words jump out and in their hearts so that they can receive it and help them to tuck those words in their hearts so that the enemy does not come and try to take it when they are not reading the word when they step out into this world help that word be an anchor to them in the mighty name of jesus so that they are standing strong and firm in you covered in the blood of Jesus with the armor of God from their head to their feet the helmet of salvation the belt of truth around their waist the breastplate of righteousness in place their feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel the peace the sword of the spirit the word of God attacking every single 
spirit that is coming to attack them. The shield of faith, which is extinguishing any flaming arrow coming from the enemy so that anything that the enemy is sending their way that is bouncing right off and back at the enemy's camp right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Send the whirlwind to the enemy's camp so that it can devour whatever is trying to devour them. Hallelujah. Remove any deception that has been planted in them by the seeds of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, uproot those seeds right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If they are being blinded, hallelujah. If they are being taught things that have been seduced to them, things that the, the seducing teachers have been trying to put in their spirits to remove them from you, Father God, I ask that you will give them the spirit of discernment to understand that that is false in the mighty name of Jesus and that whatever around them is not like you, that is of the devil. Hallelujah. I come against every spiritual wickedness in high place. Hallelujah. And I send it straight to the enemy's camp. Hallelujah. I shut the gates of hell right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for the for giving me the ability and for giving us the ability to stay in pure joy, knowing that this is all just to show who you are, knowing that this is all just a test of our faith, that this is all signs of what you are about to do. Lord, I thank you so much. Y'all have a blessed, wonderful day. Hold up. And if I forgot to say it, because you know, I always got to say it. Have a blessed day, week, month, and year. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.